I'm Jenna from Tiny House Giant Journey. We're here at Lina's House, the Lucky Penny in Portland, Oregon. Let's go take a look. This is okay. Lina, and this is her tiny home. And what's your cat's name? This is Raffi. Raffi? Raffi is such an interesting cat. He's a Devon Rex. What's that mean? It's a special breed. He came from Devonshire, England. And those of us who are allergic to cats tolerate them. Oh, you're better. allergic to cats. Yeah. How does he like living in the tiny house? Raffi loves the tiny house. <laughs> we have lived, over the last four years, we've lived in a travel trailer, three tiny houses on wheels, a yurt, and an accessory dwelling. So he thrives so, in this element. He likes little spaces as much as I do, I think. Nice. Well, this looks amazing. You have a really interesting style going on here. Tell me about the space. What's the length, width? Sure. So the house is 14 and a half feet long and eight feet wide. Mm -hmm. And because I don't have a sleeping loft, we get to go up higher too in the, in the open space. So my skylight above is about uh, I think we're at ten and a half feet. The square footage of, the, of this house is 100.3. 100.3. Hundred point three. So just over 100 square wow, feet. Wow, that's one of the smallest ones we've been through yet, but really it doesn't feel small in here. Why don't that's you right. take us through it? Sure. All right. So to the left here we have the Tansu, and the Tansu is a Japanese storage chest. This is where I store all the various, you know, things in my life. So I've got everything from my camera to my craft supplies and everything's got a space and that is really nice. This is beautiful. Is this something you purchased? It is. I found it on Craigslist. There was a couple that was downsizing and decided to get rid of it and I said that's funny because I'm downsizing too but I, it's just perfect for <laughs> But me. I think it's perfect for this small space because exactly. you can access these high shelves in right. the loft. And Rafi figured it out right away. He immediately <laughs> climbed up and started using his catwalk and started crawling up into the storage loft. Nice. And one thing I should mention too is that one of the things that's really nice about having a storage loft over the door in a space that's designed like this is that when you walk in, there's this roof over your head and it feels kind of small. Mm -hmm. And as soon as you walk through that space, the space really opens up and this feeling of compression and release really helps to make this part of the space feel bigger. So that's kind of a fun design trick. And did you design this yourself? I did. Yeah, you've yeah. designed a few tiny homes or helped others design, correct? I have. I have. And this one was inspired in a lot of ways by Vardos, so travelers, people who are really interested in being on the road but still having a home. Right. And uh, so having the bed high at the back is a, a Vardo thing, um, and having a kitchen kind of to one side is also really common. Um, so I raised my bed up at the back here. Um, because I like perching, I love being able to sit here and look out the window and kind of take stock of everything around me. Um, but it's also really nice because I can use my chest freezer, which of course I had to spray paint copper like everything else, um, and my countertop as the surfaces for my bed to pull out. So I can actually pull my bed out over the countertop. Oh, and you just let the copper... Uh, right, so yeah, these, these just scoot right over mm -hmm. um, when I pull it out. And then, once I've pulled it out of the way, I can open up the bed. It's mm -hmm. a bifold mattress. So, the bed ends up coming out to this point, and then whenever I'm done, I just slide it back. Mm -hmm. And that's it. This whole house started with the window. Mm -hmm. um, and I knew that I was interested in building a Vardo anyhow, so the curved window was really a big inspiration, and then the curved door came along. The next thing I bought was the sink. And part of the reason for that was that I knew a lot of tiny houses had started with their sink, and I'm a little superstitious, so I decided I better get one. Right. And this one, because it's hand-hammered copper, I started noticing this theme was going on, where I had all these curves and then copper, and so I also, at that point, had gotten everything kind of on a deal. Mm -hmm. So I decided to name my house the Lucky Penny, and from that point on, copper things and curved things just came at me, which was really fun. I started this house on Memorial Day weekend um, with the wall raising. The walls are built out of sips. Mm -hmm. So the walls went up Memorial Day weekend um, in a day, and then we did the waterproofing and then started on the roof. And I brought the house here to Simply Home Community in October to continue working on it and then moved in the 1st of December. Hmm. Okay, so you've been in it for four or five months now. Yes. 
when I lived in the yurt, I came to really love the way that the light comes through from above. There was this oculus in the top of the yurt, and I loved the light that came from overhead. I loved being able to see the trees. I loved watching the birds and the clouds and the rain, and it made me really committed to having a skylight across the top of my house. So the old streetcars often had the shape where they would be curved, but then had this little pop-up. And they often had windows along the sides. And I decided to have that curved shape with the pop-up, but put the window in the top as the skylight. So the skylight is eight feet long and two feet across, and it really creates, I think, a pretty magical space. I've been able to lay in bed and see shooting stars, to watch the rain, to see the clouds, um, and to watch this tree leaf out, which has been really fun. <laughs> yeah. Let me show you my table. We can have a little cup of tea. Okay, sounds great. You'll pull that drawer out. Sure. I just got this cutting board. Oh, nice. And it tucks right there. Perfect. And then you can pick your favorite mug. Oh, okay. Let's see. It's so many choices. I think I'll go with this one. Excellent. What one would you like? You got Let's it? This one. Okay. And then the tea is in that mason jar. Okay. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> All right, come on in. Yeah, it's cozy in here. <laughs> so I haven't finished out my shower yet because I don't actually shower here. Mm -hmm. I shower in the big house or usually at the yoga studio. But I will be finishing this all out and then it'll be available for showering. And when I'm not showering, my plan is to have a little bench across the top so I can sit down, take mm. off my shoes, um, and then also store underneath so I can put my backpack in when I arrive and have that just be tucked out of the way. And the shower head is here inside the medicine cabinet. Oh. And it's just a garden hose. Oh, it's brilliant. I love it. A spray it. nozzle. How is it fed? Do you have a street water hooked in or do you have a pump with a tank or? Yeah, so I have water coming through a hose. Mm -hmm. um, and then I have a hot water heater underneath the sink. Okay. Is it's it propane or electric? It's electric. It's a little point of use water heater, so four gallons. So I have to be really good about taking a quick shower. But the nice thing about using the shower head um, that is from the spray, no you know, the spray nozzle from the garden hose mm -hmm. is that you can turn it on, you know, get yourself wet and turn it off again. Right, it has and that it's really on easy. And off so this material is called alu panel, and it's something that I found when I was looking for a good material for my undercarriage. It's lightweight, but it's sturdy. It's really uh, thin. It's only about three milli millimeters thick, and it comes in a huge variety of colors. So it's expensive, but if you're thinking about doing it in a space where it's really going to pop, it makes a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. I use this copper-colored alu panel here in the shower surround, as well as the backsplash for my kitchen. Nice. And then are these cedar boards, or what are you using up here for moisture? Yeah, so the boards are cedar, and they've all been sealed and stained as well. Yeah, yeah. you've got to prepare for that, because obviously exactly. it's going to be coming out of here. And there are gaps between them as well. I know there are a lot of people who've had issues with moisture um, rising from the shower area, especially if they have a bed above. Um, and I don't have a bed above, I have storage, but having the, the open space in between them is going to enable the air to move out mm -hmm. um, through my exhaust fan. And then on this side, I have my dressers, and these dressers stack nicely. I've had them for years, I used them when I was in the yurt, I used them when I was in Bayside Bungalow, and they fit perfectly in this space as well. So the way I have this set up is I've got, you know, my little vanity, I suppose it is, with, um, you know, my jewelry and that sort of thing. Um, and it's nice because I can walk in the door and it's my landing pad. Mm -hmm. You know, I can come in, take off my coat, coat's hang here. I can take off my earrings. I can, um, you know, drop my change and my receipts and everything just has a place, which is really nice. So my drawers are all organized with little dividers. And ever since reading The Life-Changing Magic of Tidying Up, I've been folding some of my clothes vertically as well. Um, and it really does work. So that was kind of a fun discovery. So the top dresser has all of my clothes. This is my wardrobe. I do have one small suitcase of off-season clothing that I keep above in the storage loft. And then I have my shoes. And this bottom drawer 
has Raffi's litter box. Oh, perfect. And there's actually a little hole that I cut in the side <laughs> so that he can jump in and get into that space. And then I just tuck my broom back there, too. You're the smartest cat in the world to figure that He's out. He's very clever. <laughs> it's true. The porch is made out of cedar, and it actually folds up so that when I'm in transit, the porch is here tucked up against the house, and then the tongue of the trailer enables oh. me to drive forward. Perfect. We're yeah. standing on the tongue now. We're standing on the tongue. So as soon as my house is backed into place and the porch drops down over the tongue, we've arrived. This, by the way, is the chiller box. Oh, so yeah. during the months of the year when I don't need to have refrigeration inside the house because it's perfect refrigeration temperature outside, I just keep my food in this little metal box. It's very energy efficient as well. Absolutely. After I found this beautiful door at the rebuilding center, and had my copper sink and had my arched window and knew that I was doing an arched roof, I knew that I was going to play that theme up. And so I found uh, these boards for the lower portion of the house at Builders Material Resources, which is a great place here in the Portland area. And I knew I wanted cedar because it would hold up really well. Um, and these pieces were actually pieces that were off cuts when somebody was doing a project and they started out with 12 foot boards and these were the pieces that were left. So these were the offcuts from other boards, so I got a really good deal on them. And I, I sealed everything with the help of a bunch of friends, inside and out. Wow. Um, so all six sides of everything. And these shingles are, they call them rounds on the bottom, but they don't actually make rounds. They end up looking like fish scales almost, if you okay, put them yeah. just on top of each other. So then you get these ones called arrows that have a little point. And when you put the arrows over the rounds, you can actually you can make the circle. It's beautiful. So I did that for a row and then the regular raked shingles mm -hmm. and then I switched to And you know what they kind of look like? Pennies. Exactly. They kind of look like copper pennies. Exactly. <laughs> and another fun little thing is that here I have um, a little piece of copper that says home sweet home and so every time I come home I tap it and just remind myself to take a breath and appreciate that I'm home. Oh, it's beautiful. Well, thank you so much for taking us through your home. We really appreciate it. Absolutely. Thanks for coming to visit. Until next time, see you guys later. <clears throat> Tiny house cat tricks. Ready? Ta-da! Good? Make it gun? Come on, come on, go, 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 go. Go, 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 go. Good boy. Boy or girl? I don't even know.